Hi, this is Alex. In this video I'm going to paint a shovel. This is what the finished painting looks like. And here's a reference image uh, in case you would like to follow along or paint on your own. Um, obviously the reference image is not exactly the same as my composition. Um, when you take a picture with your phone it tends to uh, distort the perspective quite a bit. Um, because it has a bit of a fisheye lens. Um, I wanted my the sides of my shovel to be much more up and down and not flared out at the bottom um, like in the photograph uh, which is caused primarily by the by the lens distortion. Anyway, um, I guess uh, the question is um, why paint a shovel? Um, well first of all this is my favorite shovel. Uh, I've had this shovel for a good uh, many years and it's giving me a lot of uh, good service um, but uh, aside from that um, the other reason is that I'm really interested in uh, textures and uh, I really like the textures that are happening kind of in that middle part of the shovel that um, like there's a lot of dirt and rust and uh, there's uh, interesting things happening with light, the way that some parts of the shovel become more reflective and some much more dull and matte. Um, so that's really interesting to me. Um, the other uh, reason is that um, in my recent uh, series of paintings, I've uh, kind of toned down the subject matter. Like I've, uh, in a, my previous painting, I painted a paper bag um, I've also done some paintings of bricks and things like that. So um, the idea there is that uh, by reducing the subject matter, um, the sort of the contrast and the colors in the subject matter, it uh, forces your eyes to be much more sensitive to the colors and uh, you know the colors that are left there. So when there's no bright blues, oranges, pinks, things like that, um, it really forces you to um, kind of differentiate between the colors that are there, between the different browns and grays and uh, and things like that. So that's kind of interesting to me as well. And then uh, finally, I've uh, been trying to kind of bring in a little bit more abstraction into my paintings. Um, I tend to get a little bit, uh, a little bit too honest, I guess, in my paintings um, in that I sort of paint the subject the way that I see it and uh, uh, this particular one, this shovel, kind of gives me a good opportunity to um, play around with abstraction because this, uh, the middle part of that shovel, um, if you kind of take away the sides, um, that could almost be a little abstract painting with all those textures and all those kind of different variations. Um, so that's kind of a sort of um, inadvertent way for me to naturally bring some abstraction into my work. So anyway, I'm uh, working here on a 8 by 8 panel. Um, it's been tinted with um, a little bit of leftover paint that I had on my palette from uh, one of my previous sessions. I usually just scrape off whatever paint I have uh, left over and uh, dilute it with some mineral spirits and uh, rub it into the white paint, white panel, um, the gesso panel, so that next time I paint, I don't have to kind of battle with the white. It's not, it's not great to have white showing through on your painting. Um, uh, something a little different that I'm doing here than usual is I'm using some mineral spirits for my initial uh, sketch, uh, for that initial watch, wash. And um, I usually don't do that. Um, not a big fan of mineral spirits uh, because of just the uh, health effects. Uh, they're terrible for you. And uh, but you know, even if it's even if you're using uh, odorless mineral spirits, just because you can't smell them, the fumes are still in the air, and uh, it's really bad for you. Uh, but it is uh, pretty satisfying to be able to just do a simple wash with them. Uh, so I did that for this painting. What I've been finding when uh, using uh, 
diluted uh, paint in the beginning uh, when I used linseed oil is that my initial layer becomes um, a little greasy and uh, so later on when I go in and try to go over that layer it tends to repel the paint a little bit so I don't have a very good adhesion uh, so with mineral spirits uh, they evaporate very quickly and uh, leave a very tacky surface that uh, accepts paint much more readily. Uh, the other thing that uh, I've done in the past is also instead of using um, mineral spirits or linseed oil in that initial drawing, I would just take pure paint, uh, not diluted with anything, and just um, just kind of scumble in my drawing, my initial sketch, and then use thicker paint over that uh, with a little bit of linseed oil. So that's another way to avoid that issue. Uh, anyway, um, this was what I did for this uh, for this painting and you're welcome to try it or use mineral spirits or omit them if you're concerned about health effects. So anyway, um, started off with a, with a kind of rough drawing. Um, I used a little uh, paper towel to help me solidify some of the lines. Uh, my The brush that I'm using for my initial drawing is kind of thick, so by rubbing against the edge of that uh, that line, I'm able to create a more kind of defined sharp line. And um, as always, I'm gonna start with my dark colors and uh, uh, work from there. Um, I want to have a good layer of paint all around the, the, the panel before I start getting into the details. Alright, so I'm gonna do that and then in the meantime I'm gonna put on a little music and I'll come back in a little bit.
So now that I have my, my background in place, uh, what I'm doing now is just uh, kind of filling in the large areas of the, of the shovel. And uh, um, I know I'm kind of working on a little highlight here on the edge of the, of the shovel, but generally what I want to do is I, I want to cover the entire thing with paint, but being conscious of the colors that are, that are there. And uh, uh, basically trying to capture pretty much what I see uh, but more of a uh, more of a simplified version of what I'm what I'm looking at. So at this stage, it helps to squint and uh, try to see all the different areas as kind of big chunks of color, um, big blotches. And so um, that's what I'm kind of filling in right now. You know, there are places that have a lot of uh, a lot of dirt on them. Uh, and those are tend to have a little more of a kind of yellowish hue and uh, then there are places that are metal that is rusty which is a more reddish hue and metal that is uh, less rusty which is kind of a cooler gray and uh, metal that is more reflective which is much brighter uh, and lighter in color and uh, how those kind of areas play between each other is going to come a little bit later on uh, once I have a good solid base.
So now that I have the shovel mostly covered, um, now it's time to start thinking about the kind of the little subtleties that happen within it. So there's some interesting things happening in this right part of the shovel blade where the light starts to reflect. So it has a little bit of white coming through, but there's also some rust behind it. And so it's creating this kind of very beautiful, sort of very subtle pinks. And um, it's not very easy to capture that. You, you can't really um, you can't really just mix up that color and paint it. You sort of have to apply little dabs here and there and just see what happens and kind of instinctually, instinctu instinctually keep adjusting and then see what happens. Um, just kind of go back and forth between the subject and your and your painting and keep comparing and getting up once in a while and seeing what's missing and kind of squinting. So, I mean, that's the majority of this painting is this middle part of the shovel. It, it has, uh, you know, aside from the edges where things are pretty clear, the middle part of it is all just mush and kind of abstract uh, little dabs of colors. So... I mean that's the main part of this painting, and uh, really there's uh, there's not a lot I can say about it except for that you know I'm really just um, um, responding to what I'm seeing and trying to match what uh, match what happens on the on the panel with the paint.
it looks like I wound up making the shovel asymmetrical. Uh, this left bottom edge of it is uh, clearly not a match for the right one. And uh, I'm not sure if it was intentional. It sort of, um, you know, it sort of just felt um, the way, the way, that way to me. And um, it felt right for me to represent it that way. Now looking at it now, it um, it looks kind of like a mistake, but um, I don't really consider it that. It sort of um, it doesn't feel like a mistake. There's a little bit of a um, there's a little bit of an indentation there, and it just sort of felt right to exaggerate it a little bit. So, anyway, I'm gonna continue plugging away, and uh, I'll see you back <coughs> in uh, in a few minutes.
So as you can see that most of these colors in the, in this middle part are kind of browns, grays, and really they're tints of gray. And so to make those colors, um, I'm kind of going in between um, using yellow, yellow ochre, um, some green, which is chromium green, and some um, burnt sienna, which is the red. So <clears throat> between those three colors and adding a little bit of white to lighten things up or adding a little bit of ultramarine blue and burnt umber to darken things, you can pretty much find all the different colors within that range. So if something feels a little bit too red, you go add a little bit more green to it. If something is uh, too yellow, for example, then you want to go in and uh, bring in some of the um, ultramarine blue and white to get it more towards the towards the blues, uh, etc. So I'm uh, pretty happy with the way this middle part is turning out. I think the edges are still a little bit a little soft, uh, so I'll probably sharpen those up a little bit um, later on. And um, there's a couple of other places, like the upper left part of that shovel. It uh, needs a little bit more variety. Right now it's just a bit too plain and uh, simple. So I'm going to go in and uh, add a little bit more detail to that later. The other thing that I'm noticing is that there's a little bit of light that gets reflected off of uh, that rusty area, even though it's uh, pr fairly dull. I guess it has a little bit of ridges and so a little bit of um, shine is happening towards the middle part of the shovel. The shovel is curved so the edges kind of come towards me um, but um, so they those have a little bit less reflection but the middle part has more um, more reflection and so I'm uh, using a little bit of pinks to try to represent that. And then there's a uh, in that the right part there's some a little bit of rust over that shiny area as well so bringing some of those colors in so just kind of going around and uh, finding this kind of little adjustments uh, more kind of by feel and just kind of by comparing back and forth between the subject and my painting
So I've noticed that uh, there's a little bit of pinks in there. Uh, and I think that's caused probably by the rust. And so I've uh, put a few dabs here and there, just kind of where I saw them. Um, the the other thing that I worked on uh, while the music was playing is I uh, fixed up the cast shadow a little bit from the handle or from the top part of the shovel um, <clears throat> and uh, kind of uh, brightened up the background a little bit. Uh, it was getting a little too dark. Um, there's some interesting things happening here uh, where I'm working right now in that um, the, the shovel curves towards the middle, uh, towards that ridge. And so um, it becomes a little bit lighter and uh, more um, kind of brighter, catching a little bit more light. And um, <clears throat> I think uh, for the most part, I'm, uh, you know, just about done. Um, I think uh, it's, uh, you know, I think this painting came out pretty nice. I'm not sure if I necessarily achieved um, what I set out to do, which was to um, get a little bit more kind of abstract. But I think this was a good exercise on um, playing around with textures and trying to capture, capture textures that are um, a little bit amorphous and a little bit um, abstract. So I think in that sense that you know, I, I, I definitely got to play with that. So, um, you know, you you don't always achieve the results that you're that you're trying to achieve when you set out a painting. But I think at the end of the day, if you've uh, learned something and if you've um, you know if you were able to create something that's kind of beautiful, then um, it's probably a success. And um, to me, this painting is a success. I don't know what you guys think. Uh, I'm sure some of you will let me know in the comments, but um, you know, to me, it's to to me it worked out. Um, I mean, it's a very simple painting. It's just a shovel, just a you know, compositionally, it's pretty simple. It's just a very uh, simple, straightforward facing shovel. It doesn't have a lot of uh, colors. It doesn't have a lot of uh, the background is very simple. Um, but I think because of all the things that are happening in front of it, like on the on the surface and all the textures, it kind of makes up for that. And as I was painting this painting, um, especially while I was working on this on the shovel itself, I uh, you know I kind of got lost in the in the textures and and sort of uh, um, got so immersed in it that the you know. It sort of became kind of unconscious and I think that whenever you can get to that state where things become almost instinctual completely uh, almost without thought and just uh, kind of enter that uh, state of flow and uh, to me whenever you whenever you can get get to that state uh, it's it's pretty pretty special and I think that you know we all should strive for for that feeling uh, of being kind of almost detached from your your thoughts and um, and just being completely immersed in the work all right so I'm gonna continue plugging away for a little bit and uh, just kind of refining a few things here and there and um, I'll see you in a little bit
All right, I think uh, we're getting close to an end here. Just a few little adjustments here and there. Um, I think uh, one thing that uh, I lost a little bit is the horizon line on the shadow side. And I don't want it to be super pronounced. Um, I wanted there to be just a little indication. It's kind of hard to tell from the video, but um, it's there. But um, as I'm putting the, my indications in, I want to make sure they're in the right place. All right, so um, I want to thank you very much for watching this video. Um, did you uh, watch it all the way through, or did you fast forward to the end, or did you uh, watch it at twice the speed? In either case, you just watched the video of a shovel being painted, so I think that takes some patience, so kudos to you. All right, um, I think uh, with this I'm going to um, uh, finish up. Um, Go ahead and leave some comments. Uh, let me know what you thought of this painting. Um, let me know what you thought of this uh, video. Um, and uh, if you are not subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe. I try to paint, I try to post uh, videos uh, as often as I can and try to make them as interesting as I can. So yeah, um, tell your friends if, uh, if they're interested in painting about this channel as well. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.